Yeah, so today we are going to cover uh, the subject uh, what actually happened on the test day. Okay, what do you expect on the test day? Lots of uh, my students they ask me, so uh, this video can help all of you. So make sure, first of all, you bring your driving license. Uh, uh, I do this for so many years, and uh, each time the candidates is in the car on the test day, I ask them, have you got a driving license with you? I see in several occasions, they forgot. Okay, so make sure you bring your driving license with you on that day, first of all, okay, if you, if you come for the test. Uh, most of the instructors should remind you, but again, this is a very important thing. Without the driving test, uh, without the driving license, they won't take your test. Uh, your test won't go ahead. Another thing I like to say is, um, just before your test starts, I would say even a couple of days before, also check any emails from DVSA because your driving test must have changed sometime, or if it got cancelled, then you won't know. So sometime check on your spam folder as well on a junk junk folder because sometimes the email goes on a junk folder uh, best thing to also check is one more time check just a couple of hours before your test is starting or before your instructor arrives to uh, pick you up uh, on the test day so make sure you check your email or any text message you got from PBS. So once you've done all these two things then um, of course, usually most of the time uh, you have like a one hour lesson with, with your instructor and you you go go for the test. All right, if you're going by yourself with your own car, then um, don't go too early for the test. Just go only five to ten minutes early because uh, most of the test center in the UK, very limited car, spark, car parking space they have. So don't turn up too early. If you do turn up too early, just uh, Go a little bit away from the test center nearby and just wait there and just around five or ten minutes before that you you appear uh, in the car park uh, so park your car in a such a way so it's easily uh, you can get out of the car park okay so you do reverse and park so it's ready for you to get out okay once you park your car then uh, you go uh, to the test center uh, in so many test centers, I don't think so any test center in the UK has any reception or anything like that. So you just uh, arrive in that waiting area and just wait exactly on time. The examiner will come out and will call out for your name. So you say, yeah, it's me. And then the examiner will say, uh, can I have a look at your provisional driving license, please? So you show them your license and um, they will say they will have an iPad nowadays. So they will say sign here your insurance and residency declaration. So you tick those two boxes, your insurance uh, that, that shows that your car uh, has insurance to uh, drive you in the, in the test. Okay. So you tick that boxes and another uh, residency declaration means that uh, you are here in the UK for more than uh, six months or seven months or so. To tick those two boxes, uh, re tick it, and then sign with your finger. It's in the box on the iPad, so you sign within the box. But remember to do the signature exactly the same as it is in your license. Because I've seen few occasions that examiner didn't uh, take the candidate because their signature wasn't matching. So before you appear for the test, check on your license, see what signature you did because sometimes people do provisional license so many years back and then they do the test they forgot what the signature was in the provisional license so you do exactly the same signature as it is in your provisional license once you've done that uh, examiner also then check your photo id and things okay make sure it's, it's you they also they have the little machine they also check that your provisional license is genuine and things um, uh, then again they ask you the questions that do you live at the same address so if you haven't been living in the same address as it shows on your license it's better to change it before you go for the test but if you just moved in a couple of weeks time you don't have much time then of course you you said no I, I, I don't live at the same address and if you look you say yes I, I do live at the same address it's not a big deal if you do not live at the same address all it is that um, uh, it's uh, you have to let DVSN know if you if you change the address uh, 
and uh, if you change your address and it's too late to change now because it's, you changed it just recently then what happens is at the end of the test if you pass your test then you have to process your license automatically okay directly through TVSA but uh, if you leave at the same address then um, examiner process your license uh, uh, themselves automatically so so you don't need to really do anything the, the driving license comes in the post uh, in a few weeks time so yeah so if they ask you questions do you live at the same address you say yes in most of the cases and they say okay uh, do you want your instructor to accompany with you in the test or do you want anybody to accompany with you in the test um, so if you want to take your instructor with you you can take it in the test not only instructor but anybody who is age uh, 16 or 17 or above then you can you can take them uh, with you in your driving test okay um, once they say okay you then then you say no most of the time people prefer that not to carry the instructor with them because it puts them or not to carry anybody else at the back because it put them a little bit of extra additional pressure on the candidate so most of the answer is no so if you say no then they say okay no is do you want them to be at the end of the test for the result and a feedback so do you want your instructor to be with you at the end for result and a feedback again most of the answer will be yes so this should be yes because then if you do unfortunately if you do fail the test then the ex um, uh, examiner tells you where you fail your test in front of the instructor so instructor can able to help you for your future uh, sort of uh, 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 driving, driving uh, development if you do pass the test still it's best for instructor to listen to the debrief because then it helps them uh, with their future training also it helps you as well even though you pass your test doesn't mean now you become an expert there is always room for an improvement okay so yeah they say do you want your instructor to be with you say no do you want your instructor to be with you at, at the end of the test for the result and the feedback you say yes once it's done then say okay let's let's take you outside and let's make you read the number plate so they will do your eye test okay so usually eye test is about 20 meters away so make sure i've seen so many times candidate go for the test and they haven't they, uh, they 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 cannot able they, they cannot able to read the number plate for about 20 minutes further away if that happens uh, then your license will be revoked so make sure before you turn up for the test make sure you do you check your eye test if you do have a bit of problem just just uh, go to the optician and check your eyes out okay so if you want to measure it yourself measure it 20 minutes away make sure you, you read any car number plate once you've done that, um, they will say, so if your eye test is perfect, then they'll say, okay, go sit inside the car. Do not start your engine yet, and I will be with you in a minute. So you go sit inside the car, put your seatbelt on, but do not start the engine yet. Just put your seatbelt on and get ready. If you need to adjust your mirrors and things, do it. Uh, seats and things, and then examiner will train. So normally the examiner checks the car, make sure the car is uh, safe and sound to take you for the test. Normally they check for the check for the tire pressure and things. They also check that to make sure uh, the car has an L plate front and the back. Once they do that checks, they will sit inside the car and they usually ask the questions that do you want me to explain you what's going to happen in the test? So you say yes. And so then they will say usually this is like a standard speech is somewhat 99% this is what the speech they give a little bit can be different depending on the examiner so they will say okay we're gonna drive for about 38 to 40 minutes during the drive follow the road ahead all the time unless the traffic signs or the road marking directs you differently and if I want you to go left or right I will tell you in plenty of time if you're not sure where you're going you are allowed to ask still okay uh, we will be doing one reversing exercise possibly emergency brake and 20 minutes independent part of your driving test just like you've been practicing with your instructor okay and they say if you're happy with these instructions start your car and let's go for the drive so at this point if you're happy with the instruction you understood everything and at this point you start your car make sure you look all the way around before you start even though it's in the car park because all the tests starts together all the candidates 
if you if you going any any at, at a time four or five tests usually starts together so make sure your candidate next to you doesn't try to go at the same time as you so i will explain if you didn't understand the speech i explain you that a little bit in a simple language is that in the test you follow the road ahead means you keep going straight all the time unless they tell you to go left or right if you're not sure where you're going uh, you are still allowed to ask okay so one reversing exercise means there are four maneuvers um, three parking and fourth is a pull up on the right so there are those four maneuvers reversing exercise they will ask you only one out of it and they may carry out an emergency break so emergency break is not compulsory but they may ask you okay so th these are the things and 20 minutes independent part of your driving test so that independent part of your driving test it can be on a set now or it might be following some uh, road traffic signs so like i'll follow the sign for reading follow the sign for basing stoke or follow the sign for m4 things like that so you continue following the same sign until they direct you differently but this all the topics of course we'll cover in a different different subject but this is it um, we will also uh, will cover in the next video what happens at the end of your driving test okay so thank you for watching the video